you get halfway through mixing and realise you haven't got any gloves and that on, and epoxy will go everywhere. So I'm, I'm going to use the top of a plastic cup. That'll be more than enough to uh, mix our epoxy. So the first thing we do, grab some resin. I, it, you'll see it's thick, thick tropic, and and you'll see the the resin and the hardener are different consistencies. In actual fact, I'm going to get tongue depressors because I don't the the paddle pop stick. I'm going to need, need more than a paddle pop stick or pick up. Have a couple of tongue depressors, and they're they're a good way to measure stuff because. You know, if you only want to do small amounts, you can use a couple of matches even if really small amounts. Paddle pop sticks. I like tongue depressors when you're doing larger amounts um, uh, because you don't get splinters of wood come off. And what we'll do, we'll mix it up. Oh, maybe a bit more. So, just get a dob of it. Whack it on. Now I'm going to get into trouble mixing here because I, I probably should have a bit bigger surface to mix on. We'll see how we go. And you'll notice that I don't use the same stick to get my hardener out because if I use that stick and put it in the hardener, you'll end up with hard patches in the hardener. So we're going to grab our hardener out. Again, it's thick to topic. That, that, that looks pretty close, and close enough is good enough. I might just go a little bit loose. And you put him down, and you'll notice two different colours. So we're going to mix until we've got a consistent colour. And it doesn't take much to do that. So always put the lids back on, and then give him a mix. Right, we just mix away until we get a consistent colour. I got a feeling I haven't put enough hardener in there, so I might put a, 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 a tad more hardener on. Yeah, it's a little bit light in colour, so I'll, ju I'll just add a little bit more hardener. If you want to be accurate, another way to do it is uh, plastic teaspoons or tablespoons. That way you can be very, very accurate with it. Um, but most of the time, this is more than accurate enough. So mix him up. And when you do it, scrape off the bottom, scrape your uh, stick clean so that you make sure you haven't got unmixed stuff. Go around the edges, it's important to get it thoroughly mixed together. Otherwise, you, you will. You want a no nice even colour. Keep mixing until she's good. Scrape off, just go around your edges, scrape along the bottom. And you'll see there that that's quite easy to mix together, but when you pick it up, it's going to sit on your stick, right? Um, and whereas a lot of others, that they won't sit there like that. They're not fully thick or tropic. Righty, I'm happy with that. Where to put it? So we've got our little axe. And you don't have to be as accurate when you shave it down to fit either. You know, your sloppy good fits close enough. I've actually ground this out with a Dremel or a sandpaper, whatever. Make sure it's clean, it's good if it's got a rough surface. You don't want rust and that in there because it, it won't stick very well. <laughs> so I'll just give him a, a, a dose inside. I like it. And I'll do the other end because if you're going to have gap, it'll be in this area here and this here. That's enough in there. And we'll just we'll just give the handle a bit of a going over as well. So 
So this you've got about an hour's working time. So you, you can hold the wheel a bit longer. Yep, yeah, you, you can. Don't don't worry that you have to go flat out to achieve it. Uh, or you know, if you've got two or three things to do, you'll get away with mixing up a bit extra. So I've just slapped a bit of that on. And notice we haven't got that much left there. Then just bring him together. Oops, I'm getting shit everywhere here. And just slide him in. Clean off the excess. And when it, what'll happen, this will gel, so it'll become a sticky mess. And then from there, the next step from there, is it goes green. Green means it's no longer sticky, but it, but it's still um, easy to uh, work. You can cut it with a sharp, uh, you know, a, a knife or, or a chisel. So when, when it's green, just take the excess off. There you go. All, all done, and and you'll you'll find that once it's cured, it, it'll work better than any wedge because you haven't got any wedges to come loose on you. And, and the only way to get that out if you break it is drill down, drill a series of holes, and then a, then a chisel and cut the, the the spare out. You you won't physically pull that out. One way you can get it out, you can heat it up. Epoxy starts to soften once it gets to about 80 degrees C. So if you heat it up, you know, in front of a fan heater or something like that, to around 90 to 100 degrees C, you'd find it soften, and you can probably push it back out if you if you get the uh, the uh, join wrong. But otherwise, once it's cured, it's locked in there. So you see how easy it was to do that. No mucking around with precise fitting to get the handle to fit perfectly. And if you want to speed it up curing, you just get a, a cardboard box. Cardboard box, make sure it's not too close, a fan heater or another heat source, and just blow over it. And as I said, that hammer, you know, it was quite hot after about an hour, but it was it had already gone green. So everything was set, and then we just let it cure overnight from there, and away you go. And that, as simple as that. Just a quick question. Those marks on the actual handle itself, is there a solvent that you can remove that? Yeah, you can use acetone. Acetone? Oh, yeah, metho. Actually, I'll grab some metho and clean it off. Otherwise, it will have to be scraped off once it's dry. Yeah, yeah. Metho, metho will clean the epoxy off. You can even use a. Come in. I I wouldn't worry about down there. Yeah, you. Know, you no, I understand, but I understand. The metal it's easy to get off once it's gone. And what's green. the lifetime of the blue? I've, I've, I've been using that now for quite a few years. Yep. And, uh, is it a lifetime? How long is it going to stay? Yep. What can happen? In this colder weather, the, the resin can crystallise. Yep. So what you'll do, you'll see it, and it'll be quite thick, and, and it can even go hard. Yep. Don't worry. Just stick it in a microwave or some hot water, yep. bring it back to life like you would honey. Not a problem at all. Okay. Yep. No, it's a very good product. I use it all the time. Yeah, good, good sometimes stuff. Sometimes I'm concerned about those things that I wait until it dries and I scrape it. Yep. It really mucks up the Yeah, no, a bit of meth I want okay. it. Okay. And the other thing, you can colour it as well. So feast what's a, any any spirit based tint for, for yep, colouring. Yep, yep. So that's where we get the colours in the smaller kits over there. Feast what's and proof tint we know works very well. Yeah. Right. Thank you, thanks. Pleasure. And that's as simple as that. Yep. So what that's